the one thing that's different about the Senate from the House, though, so, and this is the way the the um, uh, authors of the Constitution design Congress to be. Uh, the House is more volatile. It should be more partisan. It always has been. Uh, uh, the Senate is, is what Jefferson referred to as the saucer that allows for the cooling down uh, to take place. And while the Senate has gotten more partisan over the years, there is a common theme that now prevails through the Senate, that we've got some very, very difficult issues to address, and we're not addressing them. Uh, we did address health care, but there are a lot of There are going to have to be some hard and tough votes made. And I've already made up my mind, uh, pretty obvious, because you all have seen the arrows that, that I've been taking. I don't care. I care about this country. And if you if you go make these votes based on what's best for you politically, then you'll make the wrong vote. You have to care about the future of the country. And politics will take care of itself. What I've always found is, is you look back at Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, when they raised the uh, uh, Social Security age, made some significant changes back there. Boy, everybody thought that's the political end of that Congress. Every single member of the House of Representatives that voted for that change got reelected because they did the right thing. And I just think if you do the right thing, that the political side of it will take care of itself. But there are very difficult votes that are going to have to be made. We've got to make uh, reductions in spending. We've got to restructure Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security to a lesser extent because it's not a big problem maker with regard to the deficit. But we've got to make real structural changes there, and, and that's going to require tough votes. Uh, and then we've got tax reform. And I will have to say, at the end of the day, I was proud of the process because you don't get any further apart from a philosophical standpoint than the three uh, Democrats and the three Republicans. I mean, Dick Durbin and I rarely ever vote alike. Um, and here we were able to come together not in total agreement, but we did recognize the serious of the problem and the consequences of doing nothing. And as Durbin was quoted as saying after he voted for the Fiscal Commission report, he said the only thing worse than voting for the Commission report, which he did, was voting against it. Because you vote against it and nothing happens. And when nothing happens, we approach this fiscal cliff that we are now headed to. We were proud of the work we did. It was not um, the total answer. We're not giving up. We're still meeting. We've got a meeting tomorrow afternoon. And will we have an opportunity at the end of the year to help decide what happens with this fiscal cliff? I don't know. We'd like to think so, but, but we don't know. But we're going to continue to work at it and see. With that, I up until that, if you'll recall, we were talking about nothing but Obamacare. The Supreme Court had just held his, a historic session of three days of debate on Obamacare. Everybody was speculating what the judges were thinking and whatnot, and uh, nobody really knows, obviously, what's going to happen. But the point about it is, is this. If I went around this room to every company represented here, and I ask you, what is the fastest rising expense in your business over the last decade? I dare say 100% of the people here would say it's health care costs. And it's exactly that way in the federal government, including the rising cost of TRICARE at the Department of Defense, which has taken away our ability to spend money on other quality of life issues, as well as buying weapon systems to um, uh, equip our men and women. So it's important we get our arms around this, and what it means is that irrespective of what the Supreme Court decides, whether they say Obamacare is constitutional or whether they say it's unconstitutional, we've still got to move forward and try to make the right kind of reforms in health care that are going to start driving that cost down. We've seen health care costs escalate and escalate 
And we've not only got to bend the curve, we've got to start the trend downward. And it's going to be magic to try to figure out how we do that, but whatever the court decides, that's what's going to have to happen. We also had, before the recess, an extension of the transportation bill, and Johnny and I were very...